Macabre-Thiele's graphical method for solving distillation problems is based on mass balances and energy balances over a mathematical constant called the equilibrium stage. An equilibrium stage is a section where the vapor flux from that layer is in equilibrium with the liquid flux from that layer. So we take our setup our distillation column and instead of doing calculations for the actual physical trace we do a mathematical model with equilibrium stages. We will always have uh, less uh, equilibrium stages in the column than we have actual physical trace and the ratio between the two is the overall tray efficiency and that is what we're going to use to convert between the two between the mathematical model and the real world. We need mass balances and energy balances, but if you make mass balances over an equilibrium stage, we sometimes don't need an energy balance actually. So let's look at this one. Uh, the index here, uh, this is equilibrium stage two. So index two means that there is a flow leaving that layer. So V2 uh, is the vapor leaving and L2 is the liquid leaving that layer. So into this layer we have V3 and L1 and out we have V2 and L2. So the total mass balance simply becomes V3 plus L1 equals V2 plus L2. Now you can think of this as the liquid coming down as fraction of that is evaporated. Uh, we can call that F uh, VAP and a fraction of the vapor coming up is condensed, we can call that F cond. And if those two have the same size, what will happen is actually that L1 equals L2 and V3 equals V2. So when does that happen? Well, that happens when we have no heat losses and the evaporation enthalpy is independent of the composition. And if that is true, we don't need to do any energy balances for the equilibrium stage. If you want to, you can look at this more carefully. Um, this is a sketchy energy balance for the system. L1 going down, L1 minus F uh, VAP going further down, F VAP going to the vapor, uh, V3 comes up, F uh, cond goes over to the liquid, V3 th um, minus F VAP, uh, sorry, F cond goes up, and then V2 equals V3 plus FVAP minus FCOND and L2 down here is L1 minus FVAP plus FCOND. And if we make an energy balance for that, so FCOND times delta HVAP, if that is approximately uh, the same as FVAP times delta H for, for that flow, then we don't need to make an energy balance. Okay, time for you to do some detailed uh, mass balances. So this is our system and we're going to divide it into three sections. The upper section, the feed section and the lower. So let's start with the upper part. In equals out. So we have steady state uh, problem. So pause here and try to write a total mass balance and a mass balance for volatile component. So I hope you managed to figure that out by yourself. So the total balance is simply V equals L plus D and the balance for volatile component is if we skip the indexes V times Y equals L times X plus D times XT. And we want to rearrange that so we get Y equals L divided by V times X plus D divided by V times XT. And we will often use the reflux ratio. So the ratio between the liquid that goes back to the column and the distillate flow going out. L0 divided by D that we will call R and if we rewrite this equation using the reflux ratio R instead we get this equation here. Okay let's try to do the lower part instead. It looks like this and the bar now over L and V denotes that this is below the feed. Okay try to do a total balance and a balance for volatile component. Okay, I hope you figured that out. The total balance is simply v L bar equals V bar plus W and the mass balance for, for um, volatile component is L bar times X equals V bar times Y 
plus w times xw. And we want to rearrange that again, so we get y equals l bar divided by v bar times x minus w divided by v bar times xw. And this w divided by v bar, if you invert that, then you get the so-called boil-up ratio. And the boil-up ratio and the reflux ratio are two important uh, design uh, things. So things you can change also when the system is up and running. So that was the upper part and lower part. Let's look at the feed section. In the feed section, you need to make an energy balance, but we will give that to you uh, so you don't have to bother so much. Let's define a thing called Q, which is the fraction of the feed that is a liquid. So we can think of the feed coming in as a liquid fl flux LF and the vapor flux VF. So LF equals QF and VF equals 1 minus Q times F. Uh, and Q here, another way to say it is that Q is the energy needed to evaporate one mole of the feed divided by the evaporation enthalpy for that feed. But perhaps it's simpler to think of it as the fraction of liquid in the flow. And what you get uh, as a combined mass balance and energy balance uh, for the feed is this equation here, and that's called the Q line. So, what is our goal here? Well, our goal is to draw these mass balances and mass balance energy balance for the feed in an XY diagram. And uh, they will look like this. So, for, for the upper section, uh, it will start at the diagonal in XD. For the feed, it will start in the diagonal at ZF. And at the bottom, it will start at xw on the diagonal. And you, I think it's a good uh, exercise to prove for yourself that that is true. That the upper line, the upper mass balance, which we will call the upper operating line, goes through the diagonal in xd. That the uh, uh, q line goes through the diagonal in zf. And that the bottom uh, operating line the, the lower operating line goes through the diagonal in xw. Okay, once we have these, let's think of what happens in the distillation column. So we have a flux coming out with a certain composition. And if in this case, when we're drawing this like this, it's a total condenser. So everything is condensed and it's a splitter. So uh, so what comes out from, from the condenser, some goes out and some goes in. So all these three flows have to have the same composition, right? So we know x0 and we know y1. OK, so what is x1? Well, we said that in the equilibrium stage, there is an equilibrium between the vapor leaving and the liquid leaving. So that must be given by the equilibrium line, right? Uh, in the xy diagram. So we draw a horizontal line at y equals 0 0.9 in this case and stop at the uh, at the system curve and there we have our new x value and then we can draw that line and then we want to have the y value for the next and that's given by a mass balance so we stop uh, drawing the line when we get to the mass balance and that is our y, y value and then we repeat again the next uh, <laughs> x value must be given by the equilibrium and then we continue like that. And we switch between the, the upper operating line, so the mass balance for the upper part, to the mass balance for the lower part, the so-called lower operating line, when we have passed the feed location. And we will look into more detail about that later. But if you put it optimally, the thing is that as soon as you pass where the two operating lines intersect, then you should switch from the upper operating line to the lower. If we look uh, at these triangles we have drawn in more detail, what you should realize here is that, well, for the first thing, the liquid flux leaving uh, the equilibrium stage is in equilibrium with the vapor flux leaving, right? So 
there is a point here in the triangle uh, on the system curve and the horizontal line there that's the vapor flow leaving that equilibrium stage and the vertical line is the liquid flux leaving that layer. We have drawn straight lines now in the XY diagram, but is that true? Are the uh, mass balances straight lines in, in an XY diagram? Pause here and try to realize if that is so or not. We have actually already told you. Okay, so we had that y equals L divided by V times X plus D divided by V times XD. That's a, an equation for a straight line if L divided by V is a constant. And when is L divided by V a constant? Well, that is if the evaporation enthalpy is independent of composition and we have no heat losses. But let's take that a step further. What does it mean that the evaporation enthalpy is independent of composition? Well, for that to be true, we need two things. For the first thing, we need that the evaporation enthalpy of the two substances must be the same. Otherwise, it must be comp dependent on composition, right? And the second thing is that there should be no mixing enthalpy. What is a mixing enthalpy? Well, if you have two beakers of, for example, ethanol and water at 20 degrees, and you mix those two, if the mixture still remains at 20 degrees, then you have no mixing enthalpy. But for non-ideal solutions, that is not the case. OK, let's try uh, you once more. Um, we have talked about the Q line. What is the slope of the Q line? Here we have five different slopes and five different suggestions. So overheated vapor, saturated vapor, liquid plus vapor, saturated liquid, and liquid below boiling point. And what we mean when we say saturated vapor and saturated liquid in the context of distillation is that saturated vapor is a gas at its condensing point, and a saturated liquid is a liquid at its boiling point. So which is which? It's like this. OK, to summarize, McCabe-Teeler's graphical method, the standard uh, version of the uh, McCabe-Teeler's graphical method is when you know ZF, so the feed composition, you know what the distillate should be, XD, you know what the bottom should be, XW, you know the feed condition, so you know Q, and you know the reflux ratio R. What you do then is, you, in an XY diagram with, with the system curve, you draw the diagonal and then you draw the upper operating line, you draw the Q line, and you draw the lower operating line. And these three lines should intersect in the same point. So if you have drawn the upper and you have drawn the lower, uh, sorry, if you've drawn the upper and you've drawn the Q line, the lower operating line must go through the intersection of these two. So that should be fairly simple. And once you have done that, you make triangles in the diagram. And the number of triangles you get is the number of equilibrium stages you need to make this separation happen. 